Okay, how are you guys doing? You guys doing good tonight? Everybody's good? I am so excited to have my friends here with me. Let's welcome up Pastor Tom and Pastor Brandon. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for having me. Thank you. Wow. I've been praying about this for a long time. I'm so excited that you guys can join us. Um, I know this church, we love your ministry, both of you guys. We love what you guys are doing. Um, as Brandon, you and I were talking a little bit about the remnant church yeah. and how there's just so many uh, that so many churches are just going in the wrong direction oh, and all. So it's so yeah. great to see you guys standing strong and uh, what a blessing to have you out here with us. So let's talk. I just want to, you know what? We have nothing rehearsed, nothing planned here other than we're just going to talk. How about, is you guys okay with that? It's like we're in our living room and just hanging out. I don't like sitting down, so this is great. Just, you guys, please. Um, so I know you guys both go to Israel a lot. Yeah. And uh, in January, I was there with you guys, and yeah. uh, that was heart-wrenching, uh, some of the things that we got to experience and see out there. Um, so question, Israel, why is it important? Why, I know you're going... Back soon again? Next week. Next week. You're going back? Next Thursday, yeah. Wow. And then uh, you've I'm got going a, in April. In April. Yeah. And I'm going in May. Okay. So uh, <laughs> March, why April, do we May. do this? We, yeah, got, it we got it covered. We got it covered. <laughs> yeah. But just for maybe someone here that doesn't understand, why do we love Israel? Why do we go there? Uh, what and what you know brings you there? And uh, so let's talk about let's talk about Israel because I think uh, I we talked a little bit earlier about this part of it. I think there's a test that's going on. Yeah. I really do. And there's been different tests in families. There's been tests in politics, and there's been different in the church, the pulpits, and now this test with Israel. Mm-hmm. And so, why is it important that we stay with Israel? So, if you guys yeah. go ahead, do you want to start? I'll let Tom go. Tom? Uh, I mean, it's kind of like, well, where do you begin? So yeah, there's when a lot there. you are a believer in Christ, and I want to make sure I come across correctly on this, what we have going on right now, and Pastor Brandon and I have talked about this a lot. In fact, we, we do a lot of conferences together. Yes. But there's cultural Christianity, and then there's real Christianity. And there's a, a vast difference. And the majority of people, it appears in America now, uh, fall into the cultural Christianity uh, category. And because of that, they aren't well taught in the Bible. Don't know if they even want to be well taught in the Bible. Right. But when you believe that God's word is true, Old Testament and New Testament, you discover, well, God made a covenant with Abram. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his descendants forever. It's an everlasting covenant. And then you start to work through things, and you find, oh, wait a minute. It's a, you have a covenant for the land. You have the messianic covenant. You recognize Wait, the Messiah uh, is, came th- from the Jews. Correct. And you start realizing everything and realize, well, wait a minute, the New Testament is a Jewish book too. <laughs> and um, when you recognize this, and there's a, there's a spiritual reality, and not only is it because of the word, but I would even say this, for the person who is a genuine believer, when it comes to the nation of Israel, I'm convinced that God ministers to your heart. Yes. And there's something that you can connect with that a non-believer wouldn't connect with Correct. Um, in, a, in a different way. Now, there's a lot more to that than what I just said, but that's basically it. You have the Bible, you believe in the Bible, therefore you trust God and you recognize that God has a particular place for the people of Israel, regardless, good, bad, and ugly. And we have the arguments, well, why Israel? Why the Jews? There's Bad Jews, we hear that all the time. Well, guess what? Right. There's bad Gentiles That's too. Right. You know? yeah. and, but they never, really? people never want to go that path, right? They'll just go right. the anti-Semitic path and, and uh, forget about everything else. But I know there's a lot more to that. So that's an overview, but Pastor Brandon will go into more detail. Well, he, he, you're totally right. The, the, the fundamental understanding of Israel is, is the study of Israelology be, built on what Tom said, the, the Abrahamic Covenant. And, and the other covenants as well. There's actually four that are still, uh, the, the new covenants yet to be applied to Israel, but it's, it's, a, it's ready to uh, be applied once they come to faith. So we understand that God has a, a plan and a purpose and a future for Israel, especially in the Messianic kingdom. And what Tom and I have noticed too is people who don't understand the kingdom either very well 
will misplace Israel. I mean, some of some believers think we're in the right. kingdom now, and right. if yeah, this yeah. is the kingdom, yeah, wow, yeah. Wait, wow, yeah. wow yeah. this is not good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. theology, like you know. Yeah. And and yeah. so then let's let's yeah. let's understand that God has promises to fulfill in the future. Okay, so then what's happening in the church? I mean, uh, Joe and I were talking about this before. Israel seems to be a dividing line. It happened on October 7th, right? right. And yes. we're like, what happened to people? Right. We understood the replacement theology types. Okay, right. we got that. What Tom and I were even talking, I was mentioning this to Joe, is what happened to the people that, that believe the same eschatology as we do? They, they know the purpose and plan of Israel, and they were completely silent. And I think what, what's happening is we're seeing spiritual warfare at the highest levels because Israel is a dividing issue. There, there's no middle ground when Israel. Correct. And, and I think that, okay, think about it from Satan's standpoint. Why is he so anti-Semitic? This is the oldest hatred on the planet, right, that we're seeing. He has to stop the promises of God from being fulfilled. Uh, really, what I think you see Satan's game is, if he can stop the promises of God from being fulfilled, then he can say to God, well, you can't judge me. You're a liar. You lied to Abraham, and you're calling me a liar, so you, can't, you have no right to judge me. And, and second... The second coming is predicated on Israel's acceptance of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And and, and it says, you shall not see him again until you learn to say, blessed is he who comes in in the name of the Lord, which is the messianic uh, greeting. Mm -hmm. And so when we see all that, now you understand why we not only just see global anti-Semitism now, we see it in the church. And, 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 or... If it's not just outright anti-Semitism, you'll see anti-Zionism, anti-Israel, they'll say. And then here's the thing that Tom and I are seeing. Just being, act, acting as if they can be neutral on the issue of Israel and staying silent. And I think, unfortunately, that silence is an evidence of, capital C, cowardness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I totally agree. Anyway. Yeah, and it, the test. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, all these tests that have been going on these last three and a half, four years. Mm-hmm. But Israel's been a tough one to see, and I think uh, we agree on this. I'm kind of shocked at seeing how there's pastors, there's churches that are silent on this. You cannot be silent when it comes to Israel, because God has made a covenant with them. God yeah. is going to pour out His Spirit upon them again. The yeah. 144,000, they're Jewish. Yeah. The two Jewish witnesses are going to be there in the end times. Actually, you know, people are going to come to Christ because of the 144,000. Sure. And so if you totally agree, you wipe out the Jews, you wipe out God's plan, and there's no promises. And so we see that. Yeah. But so, and we see, as we were talking about, we see even uh, pastors with their eschatology that lines up with us. Which, yeah. and then, But we see... Why are they silent about Israel? Why aren't they standing up? And so I think there's a deep work that God's doing in people's hearts. And I, I believe that's for all of us. You know, the day that I accepted Christ, that I just had this love for Israel. Yeah. I had love for the land. Mm-hmm. You go there and it's like, wow, this is the promised land. This is where, you know, God's son, Jesus, is going to come back and rule and reign. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have that love for the land. And so I would say to people who are watching online, all of us, you that are here, you know, we have to check our heart. How do we stand with the nation of Israel? Mm-hmm. And so uh, yeah, I man. love the fact that you guys are standing strong. You guys are there all the time. Why? Because God has called us to go there. I don't know if you noticed this, but the people in Israel are more open than ever before. Have you guys noticed Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So when we were there, uh, yeah. um, one of the days you were out with a group, and Brendan and I, we kind of did. Yeah, you, you were filming and stuff, yeah. <laughs> and we both noticed the same thing, that there was there are people, well, I'm sure you saw with the group you were the, that day too, yes. but there's people that are going through really hard times, and for the first time ever, um, they're allowing you to p- pray for them. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I've yeah. never seen that happen. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about yeah. Jews who are not believers. We're not talking about Messianic yeah. Jews. Right. We're talking about Jews who six months ago, you would have seen them somewhere. They'd be nice, but they weren't interested in hearing your prayers at all, nor <laughs> praying for them, yeah. and witnessing that. And God's doing something, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to go, can I go back to something Pastor Brandon was talking yeah, about please, in the cowardice, please, yes. is when you go back to Nazi Germany, I'm sure you know many of the stories, one of the more popular stories within our circle is uh, when there's a train that would go by on this way to Auschwitz, yes. past the church, and the pastor would tell the people in the church and the choir to sing louder when you would hear the whistles coming to drown out the noise of the people on the train crying out. 
yeah. on the way to Auschwitz, right? Yeah. So what's happening now in a Christian cultural, I would even say fake Christian cultural sense, is the pastors are literally saying, well, no, we just need to talk more about Jesus. Right. And we need to just, you know, this is about the gospel. This is about salvation. Well, wait a minute. It's just, we're going to sing. We're not going to bring up these things within the church. And it's just another form of the exact same thing. And these are pastors yeah. who six months ago yeah. would have brought up the same story about sing louder. They would have said how bad that was because we've both seen it as we've traveled yeah. around. Right. Uh, I, I'm... No exaggeration. In September, there's pastors who would have been just talking like this and everything. Right. Come October eight, yeah. everything or October seven, yes. everything changed. And they're still crying. They're crying out now because as we are in the land, those the Jewish people are crying out for help right now. Yeah. yeah. They really are. And so, what a blessing to be a part of that and to be in tune with the leading of the Holy Spirit and being able to share Jesus. And like you said, I mean, literally everyone we ran in, in we were in contact with. They coveted those prayers. They were like, we said, can we pray for you? And they, they knew we were Christians. Yeah, yeah. They're like, please. And they start crying. Please pray for us. Yeah. And they're just crying out right now. And so at, at this time that we're living in, uh, we as Christians, we need to stand with them. We need to be there for them. We need to pray about how can we minister to the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. So, Yeah, to add on that, um, the few trips that we took post uh, October 7th, we were there helping the IDF with supplies, bulletproof vests. Yes. Uh, gear that they didn't have, actually. And here's the interesting thing. The the openness that has happened. And let me explain what's happened. We were talking to them on the ground. A destabilization happened to the Jewish people. Um, and and, and uh, what they saw happened, they, they didn't believe that there was that big of an intelligence failure on the IDF's part for them to be attacked like that. And it destabilized them. And they said, we don't know who to trust anymore. And that's talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. And sometimes God will do that and sometimes uh, use a negative or a, 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 some type of evil like that to wake a lot of people up, and he has. Yeah. And what we're talking to, the, a lot of the Messianic believers on the ground uh, that are tapped into the IDF, and we're using David Tao's brother, uh, Joel, with Nativa and the Baptist Village there, what the Messianic believers are saying is that they are able to take that help that we're giving them and they go and they share that and then they explain why are these Christians love us so much and would provide us because the rest of the world hates us. Right. And we're seeing that. Mm -hmm. So guys, right now, yeah. there has, God is working to open their hearts like never before. Right. So there, we need to capitalize on that. Yeah. And we see the contrast. So what yeah. happens is there's such a contest, contrast now because there's such hatred and our love is like shining brighter than ever before yeah. because exactly. they're experiencing such darkness and hatred. They're like, why are we hated by everybody? Why do they hate us? And we have the answers. It's spiritual. And we know why and we can understand it and to explain that to them and then bring them to their own scripture and explain to them the suffering Messiah, Isaiah 53 and, and Psalm 22. Yeah. And, and they're just more open than ever before. So um, yeah, yeah, I love it. And we, we need to stand strong. We need to, again, pray together, see how we can get more involved. I know uh, there's a table downstairs. You want to talk a little bit about because you, Gihon uh, Springs. Gihon Springs. Gihon, down there? Gihon Springs. Yeah. So we got a table down. Oh, that's downstairs. cool. So yeah. Uh, Gihon Springs, you guys have, where's, where's David and Christine? David, are they downstairs or upstairs? They're downstairs, they're downstairs. Hi, guys. Hey. <laughs> I can't even see. So, uh, so Gihon Springs has their table down there, and um, it's a great uh, outreach to the people in Israel. They have a pro-life ministry in Israel, uh, Nativa. Yeah. They uh, support, which is uh, fantastic, it's a ministry that David's brother started, what, yes, 20 yeah. years ago, 21 years ago? Yeah. And it's training, it's teaching young men and young women, thinking 18 years old. They're getting ready to go into the IDF. And uh, David's brother, Joel, will take him into the desert, take him under the night sky, teach him about Abraham, looking up at the stars. But they're prepared emotionally, spiritually, and physically to go into the IDF because typically Messianic Jews, these are these are... These are Jews who come from messianic homes. Their homes are moms and dads are believers in Christ. So they're going to go into the IDF. They're going to be not well received in the IDF, 
So Joel yep. prepares them for that. Now, I think this is so cool. We've talked about this a lot. This is really cool because being prepared for the IDF, they go into the IDF prepared how to share their faith, how to be strong in the Lord, knowing they're going to get some persecution. But right now, with all of the pressure, these are the people that are being light in the, spot, in the places in Gaza, along the border. They're fighting, and other, other soldiers, men and women, are having questions. They don't have any hope. These young men that are being raised up through Nativa are able to share the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ awesome. in the most difficult places. And you think, this is really an amazing thing. I was thinking the other day, Brandon, how, and, and Pastor Joe, that all the light that has been poured into Israel with all the groups like us, yeah. I mean, you can't even count how many, tons of light, but there's a lot of darkness. But I believe we are in a, we're getting very close to the time when the Lord calls us home, because I look at this, God's sending soldiers into all the different places in Israel, nobody, places they never could have reached before, and like the stories you, you guys yeah. are telling, the people you talk to, their hearts are open. I believe the window is closing. So I get excited when, when I think about Gihon Springs and the work that they're doing yeah. and the Tiva and these things. It's like God is just putting light everywhere yes. that never uh, never could have been, been reached before what happened on yeah. October 7th. Powerful ministry, equipping them before they go out into battle, equipping them spiritually in, in a wonderful way. And just, yeah, it's a, an awesome ministry. So there's a table downstairs. Visit them, ask questions, and uh, get behind them. That's a wonderful ministry. Awesome. So uh, in the news, maybe we can, I don't know if we've got something here. Let's see. There's Israel. I don't know if you guys saw this yesterday. So uh, Franklin Graham, he said, no question, there's an antichrist spirit in the world today. Oh, wow. So <laughs> yeah. what do you guys think about that? Is there an antichrist spirit in the world today? What no. Do you guys think? no, I didn't, no. I didn't think so. Let's go to the next one then. <laughs> Man. Well, let, let me start with, with the idea that it, it's, it's permeating everywhere, and it's yes. all through society. And really, as you said, Joe, the only way to explain like the chaos that's going on in the world is you have to make it a spiritual issue. It's not a political or, or military. Or, it, those are factors, but the overarching thing is there's no way you could get to this level of immorality uh, throughout the world and then it be global. So we talk about global anti-Semitism, but let's talk about global uh, uh, LGBT or global Marxism, global fascism. I mean, it's on the whole level where it's global. Yes. There's no way you could do that on a human level. Yes. So you, it has to be explained, Joe, from a spiritual level, a spirit of Antichrist preparing this time on all these fronts. So Tom and I, we just yeah. we, we went to Australia. We go to New Zealand. I'm seeing the same thing there as I'm seeing here in America or yeah. Canada. We go to Europe. There it is in Europe. It's the same spirit. Yeah. And, and it's, it's permeating not just simply in the culture, but it's in the church. Yeah. The wokeism, the Marxism in the church. These, we talked about earlier, these, these churches that are they're like government churches, state-run state yeah. churches, <laughs> yeah. and they're not even yeah. being paid when, to do it. Yeah. yeah, they're doing it for free. And they're, they're doing said, it for free. So, so back when Gavin Newsom here said, don't sing in the church, and they did yeah. not sing in the yeah, church. they I'm didn't. Like, they didn't sing. Oh, there was, yeah, I don't want to mention any names here. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually not a, worried about mentioning names, but I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of be quiet right now. We, we will. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no, yeah, right. There's, okay, look, so, I mean, I watched it online, and they, they weren't singing. They says, well, we're going to. I'm like, you're a state-run church. You're well, listening. And they don't even get paid yeah. like we were talking about. They didn't even get paid to do that. Yeah. Right. They're, yeah, at least, you know, some of the state-run churches, at least they get paid off, but they're, they're just <laughs> not singing in church. Crazy. You're letting the government tell you if you can or cannot worship the Lord in the church, and that's just, yeah. yeah. That's and, and, and the thing is, I'll let Tom speak, but the, the, uh, let me add to that. And they're hiding behind the Romans 13 of yes. oh, misapplying yeah. that passage. Absolutely. And, and, it, and that's what we hear. Yeah, I, we I, we I heard had that pastors texting me with that, saying, Romans yes. 13, texting right. me, <laughs> why, are you, why yeah. is your church open? Romans right. 13. I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. We obey God first, not man. Yeah. Amen. God goes first. Amen. 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 So, yeah. I remember that I'm sure you guys both did the exact same thing, but it was so exciting for me on that Sunday that Newsom, yes. gruesome, whatever his name is, said, uh, said, you can't sing in church. 
So I'm sure the same with both of you. Uh, yeah, so I know I what we from, did. I thought from Daniel uh, opening up the, the yeah. window and praying to the Lord, yeah. and he's told, keep your mouth shut for yeah. 30 days. Defiant government. Imagine that. Yeah, and you know <laughs> yeah. what? And here's the interesting thing. Okay, so I told everybody, hey, let's sing louder than ever. That's right. So Newsom That's what we did. Hears, right? That's yeah. exactly okay, what we We did. all did the same yeah. thing. And most churches won't even sing to the Lord. That's amazing. And the thing with Daniel, it wasn't so much that he was protesting against the king. What he was was just doing what he always did, put God first. Right. And to the world, you put God first, oh, that's a protest. Let's throw you yeah. in jail. But, you know, I believe the testing is going to increase for yeah, us. Yeah. Keep right. watching yeah. all of the things that are developing. Yes. And God is It's kind of like getting. We, um, Brandon, you had mentioned it when we were traveling, that we were finding out just how much of a minority we really are since October 7th. Yeah. And I believe it's about ready to get smaller. And the mm -hmm. pressure's going to increase. And more yeah. and more people are going to throw Romans chapter 13 out there. That's just absolute foolishness. Yes. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. But it, it is, it's cowardice. Yeah. And, but we, it's not anything that's new to humanity. Right. Uh, the numbers w throughout history, human beings are the same. Generation after generation after generation. Was it 5% of the people or yeah. something like that will yeah. actually stay committed and say no? I'm going to do what's right no matter what the pressure is. And you guys are here. By the way, you have a fantastic pastor. Oh, yeah. Praise so. God. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. And, you know, what's so great about it is we just follow the Bible and what God says. Right. I mean, that's it. I mean, it's not simple, like it's, huh? yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty simple. What, what, it's just, yeah. Daniel, Daniel just worried that. more about God than anything else. And yeah. the consequences were pretty, pretty high. Yeah. The lion's den, but yet he obeyed God. And God, you saw that hand of God. And I believe that's what happened. It's what happened with all the churches that stayed yeah. open. We saw the hand of God in a powerful way. Why? We were just doing what God was calling us to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, the faith... And I of, know your church also. Yeah, you guys, yeah. You guys the faith of the, the believer sustained them because what was the emotion that was running through everybody? Fear. That's right. It was fear. Right. That was the number one emotion. And what, fear of losing my job, fear of being shut down by Gavin Newsom or whatever it was. And look, the, like Tom's saying, there's more tests coming. If we're still here and they, we don't get raptured, yeah. and what will be the factor? Whatever it is, it'll be a fear factor. And I can tell you, watching Canada, watching Europe, what they're about to do this year, the fear factor is hate speech. Boy, we're going to fine you if you say something against LGBT. We're going to fine you if you, you talk about the government. That's getting ready to pass in Canada and Europe. And so the new fear is, I don't want to be fined. I, I don't want to go to jail. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want to have all these things put on me because of hate speech. That's the new fear that's coming. And again, mm -hmm. if we're not raptured, that will probably be the next test that's coming. Totally. I, fear is the product they're selling. And uh, fear is, remember, Solomon said, uh, Proverbs 29, fear is a trap. The fear of man is a trap, yeah, but it's God who keeps us safe. You can always remember that. Um, just, yeah, I'm looking at just this whole fear mongering of what they're doing. And this, it's going to, this will happen. We're dealing with Christian nationalism, yeah, right? Christian yeah. You're yeah. Christian yeah. nationalist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because of that, all of the, um, the hate speech is going to, we're being labeled, we're being marginalized. Right. But what we're finding is, ro is brought into the Christian nationalistic uh, hate speech against us who are believers in the second coming of Christ and the rapture is people who are talk about the rapture are the problem. Yeah. And I believe, I don't know if it'll happen before the rapture or after the rapture, but I would not be shocked if I were you to find out that if you talk about the rapture anymore, you're going to be deemed as misinformation. And a lot of that pressure will come from pastors who say, that rapture talk is nonsense. You need to shut those people up. Because yep. you're all crazy. If you're in a, uh, something like this, you guys are as crazy as us three. We're I'm all just crazy. saying. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'll, st I'll stay in the crazy camp. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Extreme. Yeah. MAGA. I yes, love my God. I love. Well, you yeah. know the interesting thing this last week or the week before the one the one lady on MSLSD. MSN. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, MSN, yeah. not MSLSD. Did you say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? She we, said, we are extremists for what? 
because we believe our rights come from God. There you go. That's right. That's there you right. go. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and she Imagine said... Imagine that. Oh, and this is what she said. Yeah. I believe those were exact words. The real Christians understand their rights come from the government. Yeah. There you Whoa. go. That's, That's it. what she said. MSNBC. Wow. So we're a bunch this, of fake Christians here. Yeah, we are. We are. We're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is... This is oh, wow. So when we see 1 Timothy chapter 4, Doctrine of Demons... 2 Timothy chapter 3, have a form of godliness but deny the power power. thereof. It's where Paul is writing those. He's writing about the church. He's not writing about the pagan world. He's writing about what's going on in the church, and we are watching it develop. So be strong in the Lord. Remember, we are citizens of heaven, and we're going home, and, and hey... We keep looking up and we lift up our heads with expectant joy. That's right. But be strong. And we gotta we gotta stick with each other too. We really need to yeah. encourage and, each and, other. And let me capitalize on something. This Christian nationalism thing, it's a big deal. The left is using it against Bible believing Christians. And we're being lumped in. Obviously, there is such a thing as Christian yeah. nationalism, and it's extreme. It's like they want to bring Mosaic yeah. law in and stone, stone homosexuals and, and have a theocracy. And it's like, no, that's not us either. Yeah. No. And they say Jesus isn't coming back. Yes. They also teach yes. the rap. They, they, yeah, they go into a whole different realm. It's, they don't whoa, believe it's crazy. Okay. But is that the you, king, so the kingdom age is here. Is yeah, and they're yeah. building the they're, kingdom. They're building and, the and, kingdom, yeah. And the weird thing about it, I mean, think of how arrogant this position is. They're going to build the kingdom, and then when they Christianize the world, then they'll hand it over to Jesus. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Yeah. I'll tell you who they're going to hand it over <laughs> right. to. We know. <laughs> right, yeah, we it's know. Be it'll be Jesus the, the counterfeit Jesus. That's right. But, but what you have to understand is, why would they want to put you guys and myself and, and Joe and Tom in that camp? Because if you, ha- you could marginalize us and say these are the extremes and put us on the Department of Homeland Security watch list, then they can say what these people believe is wrong and we need to take away rights, yeah. take away, Silence. Take Silence. away their, chur- yeah. their, their churches. Because yeah. that's what's going to happen. The state church is getting developed. I, I'm looking to a day maybe that they might take my church away and I have to go underground. Again, that's barring if there's no rapture until later on. But you have to understand, why are they going after this politically? Because they know they have to silence us. What did, what did the World Economic Forum say? The biggest threat to them was misinformation and disinformation, they said, this year. And so they have to find a way to silence us, and I think that's the way they're going to go at it. So we need to be prepared for it. Uh, I, uh, it is fascinating when you look what's going on with Israel, what's going on with things like Gihon Springs being, and Nativa reaching in, uh, what's going on with the world's attention on Israel, how people in Israel open up to the hearing about Jesus now that they weren't six months ago, and how this is starting to happen to genuine believers be marginalized like this. And mm-hmm. I mean, you just start looking at these things alone, you go, wow, we better be ready. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but these are exciting days at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So you certainly don't want to be discouraged, but understand the Bible gives us these signs so we can look and go, okay, Jesus said in Matthew 24, see, I have told you these things beforehand. Yeah. So we would know. These are what men will do, but Jesus says, I'll save yeah. you. Amen. And it's worldwide. It's yeah, interesting. It's global. It's, global. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it's not just in one place. It's, you know, so you know it's satanic. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about the rapture. Um, I, interesting, we had a, a gentleman that uh, just started recently coming to the church. He says he was in his church for two years before he found out that his pastor did not believe in the rapture. Hmm. And so it caused him to study eschatology and dig deep, and, and it really helped him. But uh, So uh, he was just shocked, and so we see that. So the rapture, why don't we talk about that a little bit? The rapture, what's the purpose of it? Why do we, you know, what, what's the reasoning behind the rapture? I know both of you believe the rapture will happen, as I do. Yeah. I believe the Bible teaches it very clearly, the rapture before the time of tribulation, seven years of tribulation. But yeah. I thought, you know, let's talk about that. Are there indicators uh, going on around the world that the rapture, anything, rapture can happen at any time. So let me say it this way. How yeah. about that the, uh, are there indicators that the second coming, is anywhere nearby. What do you guys, your thoughts on that? That's, yeah, that's why we do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, so that's totally. why. I'd like to get, yeah, some more, no, well, no, some I know. De- like, details. I know. No, I, 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 I know, I just, you know, yeah, I know. You're, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. I, okay. I actually I like joking with you. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, 
so the signs in the so you're Bible, saying that's just a stupid question, right? It's not, no, it's actually not for everybody. I, I totally, that was a stupid answer. Yeah. Will you forgive no. me, John? Yeah, I forgive you. Hey, thank you. Forgive. We've got confessionals downstairs, by the way. That's right. <laughs> We have Father just, David's down there. David, right? David, it's David Westerlin. He does the announcements, but he also he, he does that. Yeah. I can't remember what's the question. So, anyways, so what was the question? Yeah, so all the so all the prophecies of the second coming of Christ are regarding the second coming of Christ when Jesus returns uh, to begin the millennial kingdom uh, at the end of the tribulation period. So the rapture could happen any time before that. Correct. And we don't know when. That's why we always want to be ready. And regarding the rapture, it's, it's, I had this guy who emailed me. It was pretty funny. We got a, he went on one of our Israel trips, but he's a sharp guy. He's always challenging me. And I like that. As long as, as, long as he's not a jerk, like <laughs> I can be sometimes. I'm, I'm good with it. But he said, I'm starting to wonder if I'm going to become an escapist because I'm just so tired of everything. I emailed him back and I said, I am an escapist. Jesus said, pray that you can escape these things. And, and people will say, you're just an escapist. Well, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be here for God's wrath. And the wrath of the tribulation is entirely different from all of the other persecutions. The Bible is very clear to be worse than any time that's ever happened yes. on the planet. 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 5 tells us we are not appointed wrath. wrath. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them, and they will not escape. Who are they? They are those that are left behind in the context. And I'll let uh, Brandon take it from here. <laughs> no, it, it, that's beautiful. That's, and that's exactly it. What you have to understand about the rapture, just like he mentioned, no condemnation. So in theological terms, what we're understanding about the rapture is there's, there's a thing called double jeopardy, and we see this in courts today. That um, it, So with Christ taking our condemnation, for us to go through the, the, the tribulation would be double jeopardy. We would, the, the bride would have a double dose of condemnation when Christ already took it. Mm -hmm. And so you have a theological problem if you're going to say the church is going to be condemned in the, the Jacob's trouble. So you have that theological issue. But the, 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 the thing that we watch, and Dr. Walvard said this one time, and I, I think it's, a, it's a kind of a joke, and I tried to say it in Europe, and they didn't get it because they don't celebrate Christmas, uh, sorry, uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving like we yeah. do. And Dr. Walvard would say this. He goes, you know that Thanksgiving is near right. because you see the Christmas decorations grow, going up. Right. Yeah. Okay? And what he was saying is, we're, you know, we, we see the signs of the tribulation, the signs of the second coming, and that means then the rapture is close. Even though the rapture is signless, we're looking at the other signs for the tribulation. That's how we know we're in the season. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know the season, Paul says. And, 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 and what is it? Is, is it theologically correct to say that we're in the last days? Yes, it is. Of course. And, and, and because we have not only converging <clears throat> factors and birth pains and the nation of Israel restored, but let me add one more thing that Dr. Frutenbaum will note so that we understand that we're in these last days. When Jesus said, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and he told the disciples that would be the sign for the end of the age. Well, what is that? Well, that's a Jewish idiom for world war. And the first time we saw in, in, in history, world history, world war is, is 1917. And so what Messiah was trying to say is the last days will begin when you see world war. And what happened? World War I happened. And how did, how did World War I play into Jewish, uh, uh, Jewish uh, returning to the Israel? We had the Balfour Declaration. We just met the grandson of Lord, Lord Balfour, Balfour cool. uh, yeah, yeah. when we were in, in, in uh, Australia. So when we say we're in the last days, we're in the season, it's biblically correct to say that. We're not some lunatics putting the tinfoil hats on, you know, saying, well, I believe, you know, and, and putting a sandwich board on us and saying, you know, it's coming soon. We have every biblical reason to say we're in the season for the rapture in the last days. And so we have to, you're on solid ground when you say that is what I'm, my point is, I guess. Very good. Well, you know, well, this is cool. We both found this out when we were in New Zealand meeting the grandson of Lord Balfour that Balfour was Jewish. Yeah. And we didn't know that until we were in New Zealand just a few weeks ago. We started talking to him. And there's a huge population of Jewish believers in New Zealand. Wow. And that was totally wow. cool to find out. Yeah. Um, 
we didn't know. We had no idea. Yeah. We had heard David had tell, had told me a few things, but that was all I knew was what David told me. We went down there to meet him. Yeah. And then all these other people are going, wow, this is crazy, yeah, is which crazy. was really cool. There's yeah. this remnant of Jewish believers in New Zealand. Wow. And, so and, and, and and top of that, you know, Tom and I have also discussed about the rapture. What is the, the single most hated doctrine, even in Christendom, is they go after the rapture. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why, why, do it, do they, why don't they go after preterism or, or post-millennialism or something like that? Why is the rapture doctrine always targeted? I can tell you from a satanic standpoint, Satan's only going to go after the truth, okay? A kingdom is not divided against itself, good so point. it goes after that which is true. Yeah, good this point. is why they'll say, well, Tom and Brandon and Joe, that's Darbyism. That, John Darby made that up. What a straw man argument. That's not mm -hmm. true at all. Uh, as pointed out, early, early in church history, the early church fathers believed in the, the imminency of Christ's return. And they, they were premillennial in their eschatology. It was still rudimentary, but they had basically had our eschatology at, 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 yes. at the foundational level. And so this whole thing of you guys just started it in the 1800s or whatever, and, and this is all made up by a man. It's like, yeah. whoa, where did you get that? Again, Satan lies, and he's going after the rapture. Now, yes. the funny thing about this, Billy will talk a lot about this, but... What do you think the demons say when they, they channel people that are ne practicing necromancy about the rapture? They say this, there will be a great evacuation of about 2 billion people. This is what the, 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 the people who are channeling demons say. And that these two, these, these, these 2 billion people will disappear because they need to be re-educated because they were holding Mother Earth back from her spiritual evolution. Yeah. And then they say this, and don't worry, there's going to be a lot of kids that disappear too. But don't worry, the aliens have just taken them to a new planet, and they're going to populate the planet. Wow. Now, here's the deal. Why, why would they say that? And you can find that in Chuck uh, Missler's yeah. book, by, by the way, Alien Invasion or something like that he wrote in the 90s. Why are they saying that? Because, they look, know. they have to have a reason yeah. for what happened to us. Of course. Right? They're not saying about a preterism. They're not saying about post-millennium. They're saying about the rapture. So... You can see from the enemy standpoint what the enemy is targeting, right? So, Very good. Anyway. Very good. As we talk about wars, I, I found this. I don't know if you guys have seen this. So the Houthis knock out underwater cables linked to Europe and Asia. So they took out the underwater cables. Um, so as we think of wars, so we're the U.S. We are basically at war, if you will, with the Houthis. We're, we're you know, because they're bombing, uh, missiling uh, in the Red Sea, cargo ships, and all that's going on. So we've got that going on. We're in a war, if you will, in Ukraine. We're with Israel there as much as we can, but we're supplying them. So we've got all these wars, rumors of wars. Uh, where do you guys think all this is going? Biblically, would you see, uh, as we talk about world war and all that's happening, I mean, there's a lot. Even, then, even think of uh, uh, Korea. You know, we've got that going on over there in North Korea. So we've got a lot going on. The U.S., I believe, we're, we're spread pretty thin all yeah. over the place. Mm -hmm. But I just would love your thoughts on that. Because we, I understand we have cables underwater also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah this one, uh, so there were four cables that were taken out. Correct. And they're communication cables. I personally believe it's just the beginning. Yes. And you can shut off pretty much any country if you target these things correctly. Uh, between the United States and Europe or whatever. I mean, listen, Russia knows where these things are. We know where Russia's are. And we all know China does and all these things. And we keep hearing about cyber attacks. This one is a little bit different than a cyber attack. There's so many different dynamics that are going on right now that um, when you look at what's going on, the Red Sea, to mm -hmm. me, it's a huge factor. But, and I'll just throw this out there. Uh, it was... What was it, about three or four weeks ago that a uh, one of uh, Britain's uh, ships, it was an 80-foot long, 800-foot-long Navy ship that was sunk. You don't hear much about it at all, all in the news. Have, have any of you heard about it? No. If, if Pastor Joe mentioned it to you, no, and I, um, I, I mean it's just not out there. there. Yeah, yeah. So that it's one. you don't you don't hear wow. about it. Well, why not? Well, if it gets out there too much in the public, guess what? it's going to escalate the problems. What happens if we find out that tomorrow morning, the Houthis took out a battleship 
from yeah. the U.S. And here's the dynamic. Right now, they have drones that can do unbelievable damage, and they do have the ability to take out a Navy ship yeah. of the United States. The problem is the United States has is we have $100 million missiles to take out a, a $10,000 drone. You know, this, it, it doesn't even make any sense. Uh, how many missiles can we fire, whether it be a $10 million or a $100 million missile or, or a $1 million missile? It doesn't make any sense. We've got a huge problem. What happens with the Joe Biden administration when <laughs> a ship is taken out, what does the Biden administration do the next day? If they don't do anything, it's a huge problem, right? If we hear about it. If they do something, it has to be unbelievably big. I mean, I would even say they might have to nuke something. Uh, because the, we don't have the same type of weaponry that Russia and Iran and now even the Houthis are using um, to be able to defend against the drone war warfare that, is, that has, has yeah. developed. But I mean, there's so much that is going on right now, and the dynamics are unbelievable. When you look at wars and rumors of wars, um, how is this thing going to escalate? Then we have, if you just look at the U.S. military, uh, we, we're woke. There's still some good men and women in the military trying to hold up. Uh, there's still some leaders in there that are doing a great job. Some of you probably have family members that are in the military that are do, doing their absolute best. Yeah. But we look at it overall, it has definitely turned woke. And we have this, this soldier the other day who lights himself on fire yeah. because he's yeah. pro Hamas. Yeah. So if you have this kind of thing in your military, what's the Joe Kamala administration going to do? with the dynamics we have right now already being spread thin. Um, I mean, there's so many different factors, but I'm telling you, man, we, everything, is, everything is also going to look at American Bible prophecy. Right. You know, there's another issue. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I think you, when you look at this, you, you obviously have a spiritual reason, the wars and rumors of wars, and obviously Satan is bringing a lot of things to the head. Um, on a political level, what you have to understand about the Biden administration um, is the reason these eruptions are happening all over the place uh, with rogue nations, whether it's, it's Kim Jong-un uh, in North, uh, North, North Korea, Korea. Uh, or it's Russia, or it's, it's the Houthis, or wherever, why is this all happening now? It's because of weak American leadership. Okay, you, yeah, you, so I that's agree. on the political level. We, we understand the spiritual, but let's, let's talk about the political level just so we can understand the dynamics. Because of the weakness of the Biden administration, and the weakness is due to a policy of the Biden administration, which is called appeasement. That's the policy they have been using. It's from a leftist mindset, okay? And so they're, they're appeasing the Houthis, they're appeasing Iran, they're appeasing all these terrorist groups. I, I, I know it sounds crazy, but you have to understand who surrounds Biden. Biden's weakened at Bernie's. He's not even alive, I don't think, okay? <laughs> he's, he's just floating, and, and, and he has sunglasses on, he's eating ice cream, but he ain't alive. <laughs> sunglasses and okay? ice cream. You <laughs> right. saw that. Right. Did you see yeah. that? He's yeah, over there yeah. eating, eating ice cream again, <laughs> which is a sign of dementia, by the way. Um, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I do digress. But you got to understand, <laughs> what's, what's accompanying the Biden administration is the Obama hangovers and leftovers which are virulently anti-Israel, okay, and virulently leftist. And so they have a pro-Iranian, pro-Palestinian policy. And so why, why were they not going after the Houthis? They're just totally decimating the Houthis because they don't want to take off Iran. I, I know this is going to sound crazy, but if you lift, listen to military strategists like Victor Davis Hansen, I, I, and he's a Christian, by the way, but, I, but you listen to Victor not because of his, his, his take on theology, but he understands military history. He will say, if you watch what the United States is doing, they have a pro-Iranian policy. And what is the policy? Wow. They believe that if they can appease Iran enough, then Iran will have hegemony in the area and calm down <laughs> their, um, I know this sounds stupid, <laughs> it okay? does. and calm down the Houthis, Hezbollah, all these other things, and so, they want to give Iran military strategy wins and not upset them too much. This is why they've told Israel to back off on Hezbollah. This is why they won't do anything to the Houthis. And, and so when you see this, this weakness, there's a reason behind it. It's not like they're a bunch of bumbling idiots. This is a thought-out leftist mentality, 
and it's backfiring on the world. Because every enemy is saying, they're weak, let's exploit it. Let's attack Israel. Uh, uh, you think, ask yourself this, do you think Putin would have invaded Ukraine if Trump was in office? No. Not at all. Mm-hmm. And the, why, why do you know that? Why do you know that? Because what, what was the factor of Trump that would have backed off Putin or backed off Iran? Because they know he would have done something to them. And he would have taken out, and, and, and look, like Victor David ha- ha- uh, Hansen says, the way you stop evil is you have to disproportionately respond. So if, 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 if America would allow Israel, wipe Hamas out, just throttle them, it would stop it. Okay, but what are we telling them? Oh no, you have to do proportionality. There's been no wars ever fought where there's not disproportionality. When we dropped the bomb on Japan, uh, that was disproportional, but it stopped the war. So the new policy of America is that, and it's causing, it's gonna cause World War III. And that's, that's from his standpoint, but I, wow. I agree with that. Wow. The, um, it was about two weeks ago that the Biden-Blinken administration uh, said you have 45 days to every nation that is receiving military aid from the current administration has to prove to the Biden-Blinken administration that they're using the weapons, I don't know, like in a humanitarian way or something yeah, like that. It's crazy. Whatever <laughs> insane way it was. It's insane. And you know what it is. The target is Israel. Yeah. I, and... So you look at this and you go, this is just really something else. So it's this whole target, pees the alligator. Listen, it's not going to work. Sooner or later, they're going to run out of food for the alligator. Yep. And the alligator is going to, I mean, look what Iran does to their own people. Yeah. Like they're, they're going to really oh, be, yeah. a, like Iran's going to be a blessing to the Mideast. Yeah. Yeah, they insane. do a great job with Hezbollah and insane. Hamas. And, yes, totally insane. So the policy, and I'll just end on this, the policy that America has is going to cause World War III. And the policy is we don't want to fight anymore. Not us, but the Biden administration. Right. And it's going to cause a fight. Right. They're inviting it. Because of weakness. Yeah, because yeah. of the weakness. Yeah, very good. This I found in one of your videos, Tom. I was just, okay. I was just, this is a, a Holy Spirit Ouija board. I haven't seen it. He told me about a it. Holy That's Spirit crazy. Ouija board. Let me read this. It says, get the answer you need. The Holy Spirit board can answer all life's most important questions straight from, from the man himself. Listen, listen to this. Perfect for churches, prayer groups, and just getting together with your friends. Is yeah. that in, you could get this on yeah. Amazon. I would not suggest anybody get yeah. this. A Holy Spirit Ouija board. Yeah, so it's real. So I, did, <laughs> I can't so believe that. One of my <laughs> listeners sent it, sent it to me. You know, I was going to fact check things. I said, yeah. this has got to be Babylon B or yeah, something, Yeah, that's what right? I thought, yeah. Right. So I went on Amazon, and sure enough, it's there. And I thought, this is insane. A Holy Spirit Ouija board. This is how you're going to get in touch with, say, the man upstairs. The man, yeah, the, yeah, the man himself. The man Jesus. downstairs. Wow. He says, "Well, will be the man downstairs." So communicate. He says, c- "Communicate directly with Jesus Christ through this." But this board. is how directly. insane. So, so you know, this person's just making money mocking Christians, right? Yeah. Whoever's marketing this, the, it, the, that's what they're doing, right? They've got a three point uh, nine rating. This, so this reminds me of this guy. He was a. He's an atheist. And he, he gave people, he's given Christians insurance policies to take care of their pets after the rapture. They, I remember, this was several years ago, I remember reading that thing. And there's people who are giving him money. Like, do you think this guy's going to make good on the promise after the rapture? But I mean, but this is, this is taking advantage of really stupid people. Yeah. But the reality of it is the state of the church yes. will... Well, per, I mean, people are, they're, they're so lack discernment. It's unbelievable. And the way pastors are, I, I'm sure some of these are in some churches in America. And just thinking, this is fun. Let's do it with our youth ministry or something like that. Yeah. Holy Spirit, Ouija, Ouija board. board. Well, with that, let's talk uh, apostate. Do you believe that uh, we're in that time now, the apostate church? No, and I think everything's going really good. You think good. it's going really good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, Especially with according these to the according to the NAR movement or whatever yeah, it is, right. oh, yeah. we're in the kingdom, or the now. Yeah, kingdom, now. kingdom now. This it's, is it, baby. Yeah. How much better could it get? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your best life now. Best. Well, there, there's another subject too. <laughs> right. 
Well, with the the the, the, the great apostasy, I, I no doubt think we're in it, um, and mm -hmm. it's not just a regional thing because as we travel, it's all over the globe. It's every church, uh, not every church, but every place I go, the majority of the churches are woke or or, or government ran or or whatever or or pushing false. Uh, theology. And so when you see it now on a global level, it's not just America. I have to take a step back and say, it's happening. We're here. And, and, and the stats um, prove that out as well. The stats prove it out on how many people are coming to faith in Christ, especially, let's take America, for instance, with the millennials and Gen Z. It is atrocious, yeah. absolutely atrocious, the stats on them coming to faith. Most of them put non-religious or whatever, and they're not coming anymore. And you can light yourself on fire. Uh, you, you, know, you can have all these uh, circus shows uh, at church, and it's not attracting them. Uh, I don't know why churches do that. But so you see the, the lack of response by the younger crowds um, and the dying churches at the same time, and it's global. You can only conclude one thing. We are in the apostasy. What's the stats on, on per week on how many cults start up? It's 75 new cults start per week. Wow. wow. Okay, that's globally. And we're not, we're not talking about like, you know, like a Mormon big cult. We're talking like stuff that starts in people's homes and stuff that starts in their garages or wherever. It's 75 per week. Wow. That's unbelievable. What's starting? So we're we're in it. There's no doubt about yeah. it. You're telling me uh, where was was that New Zealand where you guys were at? Where they did they? There's no church that they can find, so they're doing home yeah. Bible studies. There's no absolutely no church in their areas, right? Yeah. So they can find a pastor yeah. that's teaching the Bible. Yeah, it's very difficult to find. There's a few Calvary chapels out there that we'll eventually connect with, and a few other churches. But so we have a conference back there. There were what seven, eight hundred people, maybe more than that, that came through the conference. And um, but the entire there wasn't a single church that was part of the conference. It was all home Bible study driven. Wow. Yeah, wow. and that is a wake up call to us, yeah. right? Uh, in Europe, I would say Europe might have been even worse when yeah, we were there. So, wow. in fact, Europe, this is you know, Brandon can talk about this too. When we were with we Ireland and Scotland and yeah. and. Uh, in Italy, and but we get to Ireland and Scotland, and there were people that were driving uh, through three countries, four countries just to come. One guy, I think he took 17 different trains to get there. Yeah. Yeah, One guy saw us standing there be, in the hotel, and he just started crying as soon as he saw us. And, and this was story after story. Mm. And what it was, it wasn't just that... Um, they were coming with their buddies to go to a church. Like here, when you go to a conference, you kind of wrap it around a vacation. You know, you can well, this, this could be a cool weekend. There it was, I just want to see another Christian. And that, I mean, you might have three people from Germany, uh, two people from the Netherlands. They don't know each other. And they're coming in, and they're meeting, they're finding out we're the remnant church. So it's a very real thing, but I believe it's coming to America. Brand, Pastor Brandon does. We can see it in everything that you were talking about yeah. there. You know, yeah. you see it, and this is, it's real. And what, the scary part about it is it's leaderless. I mean, it, it, like Tom leaderless, mentioned, yeah. it, the, the pastors are gone. They're, they're, and so not only the churches, but the pastors are not there. So finding a guy like Pastor Joe or Pastor Tom, that's like finding gold now, uh, globally from what we hear from other people. And, and, and so um, a lot of the remnant uh, is uh, channeling, uh, you know, using the internet to, to connect to Tom and connect to Joe and different other ministries because that's all they have. Right. They don't have a pastor right. anymore. It, it is gone. Yeah. And we, we've, we've crossed the threshold where we don't come back from that. Yeah. And how does the church end? How does the church predict the end? In Laodicea, Right. This, and there will be a remnant, a Philadelphia remnant, but most of the church now is asleep, and it's leaderless. Now, what's, what's, how do you, when you look at Laodicea, the name Laodicea, what is it? It's, it means rule of the people, right? So you don't have, it's not authority-led anymore. You don't have pastor-led churches anymore. It's people-led. It's consensus-led. It's groupthink-led. 
It's the rule of the people. And that's what we're starting to see with the churches. They're leaderless. <laughs> and the people are ruling. So yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. there. Yeah. It's there. I agree. And, and you know, there's some, big, there's some big churches in New Zealand and Australia. But it's not like this. No. You know, they, they, don't, want, they don't want us. Like you know, they, they want the experience. We, they want. It, listen, yeah, it's a party, yeah. and you and us, we're not invited to it. Yeah. <laughs> put, it put it that way. Yeah. That's okay. We don't want to go. That's right. That's right. This is another one that uh, I saw on one of your videos. Uh, this is crazy. Oh, that's great. UK isn't schools it? are now yeah. installing spying software in restrooms in schools. That's pretty. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're wow. in a restroom, and yeah. you got yeah, this is just surveillance crazy. in the restroom. In restrooms. And you know, and you know this. I mean, this is just what we know about. That's something that's been reported. How many of these things aren't reported? Well, when we were in Australia, and the same thing was happening in New Zealand, when you start thinking about spine software, and, well, you're probably going to get the censorship or something, aren't you? Oh, we're, that's, yeah, we're used to it. Okay, so, <laughs> we're to I mean, in the question, all right, so it's I'll just fine. go there. It don't matter. So we're, <laughs> we're in Australia, and we find out everybody's going the same speed limit. Yeah. Remember, how many oh, of yeah, you yeah, remember... Yeah, yeah. Are old like me, and, and you remember if you're a guy and you had those cars that would go around the track, and the Matchbox one. This goes back like 1960s. Anybody as old as me? Okay, okay. So the Matchbox ones. The Matchbox. You're old. You're that old. Oi vey. You know, so it had this. The Matchbox one had like the spring in it, and your car had a little needle that hooked into the spring. So all the cars on the Matchbox oh, yeah. motorway would go the exact same speed. Yeah. So it is in Australia, and the reason why we found out from John, who was driving us around, he said there are cameras everywhere. They, you will get a ticket for speeding, and even for not wearing your seatbelt. Same thing in New Zealand. And since then, he, he has been conversing with Brandon and myself. In Australia, they, he said this summer... They are starting the digital ID tracking. In Australia, I had a friend from Papua New Guinea who went there as a missionary. He, he, by the way, he was an FBI agent. And he said, that place is totally corrupt. But he's now a missionary in Papua New Guinea. He said they already started that in Papua New Guinea, which is down there near Australia and New Zealand. But he said, it's coming this, this summer. And we witnessed what was going on the last four years. Australia, New Zealand... Hawaii, Canada, they were like they were like targets to be used and it is definitely happening. But yeah. I, yeah. that was really something else. It, it was shocking to see that and how the people complied to that because we were on the, the yeah. road and everyone's driving the same speed. I'm like, why is people doing that? And we realized the cameras are popping up every time you go past a certain marker. And, and so to, let's add to that. So Australia's going to add this national uh, digital identity. What do you know, what do they want to do now? They want to add a central bank digital currency, okay? What's going to be attached to that? An identity. And then the money is programmable. And so on, on top of that, it's, it's a, a mass surveillance of our economy and what you purchase. And then it's programmable what you can purchase. And uh, you, you guys are aware of that. But that's the ultimate in surveillance to know where I'm spending my money and how much I'm spending and where I'm spending it, I mean, forget it. it that's the ultimate control. And it's going there. I, there's, there's no way back. They're trying to implement this as soon as possible. And uh, like I was uh, reading about last year, they were test case, uh, doing test cases with the infrastructure of the digital currency here in the United States with about 11,000 banks. And it was working just fine. And so they were, they were practicing it and saying, look, once we get this ready, we're going to introduce it. So yeah. you talk about the ultimate surveillance. It's coming. Yeah. I, I don't know how do we escape it. I, I don't know what the answer is. Could people ask me, well, what do I do then? I, I go, I don't know. We're going to have to cross that bridge when we get there, and maybe the Lord will show us what to do when we're there. But until then, you know, pray for the rapture, yeah. obviously. But it's possible you could see that implemented yeah. in our lifetime. And remember, if you, it's not the mark of the beast. Yeah, it's not. Until mm -hmm. it comes to the place of worshiping yeah. the beast or his image, all right? So if we see these things, they're coming down, in and of itself, it's not the mark of right. the beast. Right. And that's not yet. Right. It'll, it'll likely go that direction. Yeah. And it won't be fully implemented until after the rapture of yeah. the church yeah. with the mark. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about that. Amen. <clears throat>
And you have to worship the Antichrist exactly. in the image. Yes, it'll be an act of so worship. It's, yeah, it's not going to be Nobody's accident. Nobody's going to unknowingly right, receive take the, the mark of the beast. Correct. Yeah. You're going to know exactly what you're doing. Correct. Okay. Wow, time is going by so fast. What's going on here? So the Taliban ignores global outrage, uh, continuing to do its stadium executions. So uh, here, the Taliban, they're evil. And uh, you see violence. They're, they're, they're very violent. I know uh, when the tribulation comes, violence will increase. Uh, we're told that when the seals are open, there's going to be hatred so bad, people are going to kill each other. And so uh, we see violence, I believe, all around the world increasing. So your thoughts on, on that? Yeah, it's going to increase. It's going to increase? No, I'm sorry. Okay. I just did that on purpose. Oh, that's, that's good. Fine. That's good. <laughs> yeah, we're so all in agreement. Okay, let's we, go to the next one. <laughs> well, that's the question. So, yeah, I mean, it is going to increase, right? We know it's described but in the we're context of birth we're, pains yeah, we're upon the pregnant it. women. Lawlessness will abound. Uh, when, it's interesting. When you look at the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the red horse is war, and there's a great sword. And that's mega sword. It's talking about great war that's going to break out. You get down to the pale horse, the fourth horse, it has, uh, and they'll kill by the sword. It's a small sword. It's like a dagger, right? And it just, what, the way I've looked at it is that people will take matters into their own hands, whether it's because uh, the police aren't allowed to do anything anymore, defund the police kind of things, lawlessness abounding, so people are, hey, I've got to protect myself. Again, the fulfillment of that is after the rapture, but still we see, see everything it. developing this way. So when you see it's going yeah. on with the Taliban, yeah. what we've, ISIS, all these things we've been watching for a long time, I believe people are being conditioned to see a lot more bloodshed. Yes. And so it's going that direction, but it will increase. But again, you got to remember, we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air before the wrath of the Lord comes upon the planet. But, and, the, and these things in the book of Revelation, the Olivet Discourse, are talking about that time during that tribulation, the, the 70th week of Daniel, that we are not appointed to. Yeah. Amen. So have you guys meant to like a Walgreens or like a, I don't know, what, CVS or what, are the, what do they CVS. have? So CVS or something like that. You notice a lot of the things are behind acrylic cabinets and locked up. Has anyone ever wondered why is that happening? Why are people, you know, we've got, we got a homeless problem. But you have to understand, lawlessness. Yes, lawlessness, <laughs> absolutely. But it's actually on purpose from the left and the policies that they're implementing, Okay. So you see San Francisco, you see LA, and it's a dystopia, and they just let people just steal things. Yeah. And what's the, I think it's like, you can steal up to $950 or something like that, yeah. and nothing yeah. will happen to you. That is actually a legal, uh, sorry, not illegal, a legal thing of allowing lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Now, now bring in the wokeism. I know this is going to blow your socks off, but you have to understand the liberal mindset or the leftist mindset. It's the fact that, you white people don't steal, but people of other colors steal, and you have to allow them to steal. So if you putting a penalty on them is white privilege. <laughs> what? So, I mean, seriously, no, man, right. this, this is the right. mindset. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. To even to the point of public schools yeah. that you don't discipline yeah. uh, uh, people with different skin colors the same yeah. yet you would discipline a white person. Right. I mean, this is total racism, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You get that. Yeah. But they're saying that we should allow people with different color skin to uh, allow crime because that's what they do in their country. That's allowable in their culture, and we need to be sensitive to their culture. And that is allowing the lawlessness. Correct. It's by policy, guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Romans 1. I'm sorry. That's just Romans 1, mind. Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's actively being pursued in our legal system as well. Okay, so a guy commits a crime in New York, he doesn't have to pay bail. So there's no deterrence for crime anymore because there's no penalties for crime. And so that's why you see lawlessness on purpose. Yeah. And, and, and someone said this the other day. They said this, and maybe you can chew on this. Do, 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 the, do the elites take joy that us in the middle class are having to deal with this? And they say, yes, they do take joy. 
They rub it in on our faces, and you have to live among them. You experience it while we live in our fenced palaces, and you, 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 uh, you middle-class people have to experience the lawlessness. You're getting the good taste of your own mess or some, some weird type of thing where they take delight in us having to deal with that. Wow. And I think that's right. They're right. They do take delight in it. Because yeah, they don't goodness. have to, they're, li they're living in Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. And when you pump, when you crank out illegal aliens into Martha's Vineyard, what's the first thing they do? Oh, they get them out. Oh, well, what about over here? Oh, that's okay with you guys. We don't care. It's, it's, it's on purpose, guys. It's not just an accident, the lawlessness. It's on purpose. Yes, I agree. The, uh, I, the lawlessness will bring the leadership they want. Because it will get to a point where people will cry out, "Yes, save us from all of the destruction that's happening. That yeah. day will come. Interesting dynamic because the Bible talks about two things in the last days. Lawlessness yet complete control. And that's what we're being set up for. Right. And the lawlessness is a tool uh, that's being used. I, I have a friend point. who uh, uh, was a, his, one of his business partners was golfing with George Soros' son. And he asked him, this is probably about five years ago, he asked him, you know, about basically lawlessness at that time. Think back five years. It wasn't called wokeness yet or anything. But he said, uh, why does your dad put money into these types of policies, right? He said, it's just, he goes, he goes well, my dad knows this stuff's really bad, but he makes a ton of money when everything goes bad. Yeah. And that's yeah. the reality yeah. of it. Yeah. Power. Yeah. Money and control. Good point. Yeah, very good point. Mm. Okay, we are running out of time. <laughs> I did. I wanted to touch on. We can't touch on that. The U.S. Census to ask questions about gender identity and also sexual orientation. We'll leave that one. Um, then you've got. Now we'll skip that one. Probably go away for that one. Wait, where is it? I thought I had an AI one here. Well. <laughs> How about if we go to that oh, one right weird there? Weird dude. You have a <laughs> book weird. out there. I do. Pastor Tom, why don't you tell us about that? Okay. And then uh, why don't you do this? If you can, tell us about that. And then uh, maybe let's, uh, let's close with uh, why we do what we do. So I'll make it super quick. So I have three books. I brought them all with me. And please, okay, so I don't normally do this, but Joe's, Pastor Joe's a really good friend. Yes. And... Um, and I can't do this at a conference because a conference, there's other guys that are also selling books. But I do have them downstairs. You can have one. You can have one item. Just take it with you, okay? But I would ask you to, and I'll, I'll sign books or whatever you want. And I think they're, I think they're really good books, too. I surprised <laughs> myself. But, um, I but agree. if you want to make a donation, you can go online later and make a donation. I really don't want any cash tonight or anything. But I would appreciate it because I don't have a job as a pastor anymore. I got fired. No, that's not exactly oh, no, what no, happened. No, no. He stepped down. He stepped what down. What happened was, let yes. me tell the truth. Because yes, people yeah, are no. going to, that's going to get played. Yeah. It's going to get clipped they out. They got fired. They I got just fired. That, that was Tom. recorded, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, that's online, great. Yeah. It went live. That's just great. Yeah. So what happened was I, I stepped out of my position as lead pastor to pursue uh, this full time. I, you know, and, and um, I'm 65 years old this year. And I thought, you know what? I've been doing that long enough. I want to do this. I'm excited because Pastor Joe said I can come here. Sometime. Yeah, we're going to have him more often. I'm excited yes. about that. More often. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but so that's, that's what I'm doing. But I, I really do want you to have a book. And again, I, I, I wouldn't do it all the time like that, but take one. If you think about it, I'll lay enough guilt trip on you, make there a donation online or something like that. That'd be cool. But How anyways, can the people pray for you? Because I know that's a new ministry. And a, well, you're step, you've stepped oh. down, and now you're... Because yeah. we talked about, you know, that to be good, I would be my heart that they would pray for your ministry. So what would you say? Please, if, you know, pray. pray. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Pastor Brennan and I both travel a lot. We travel a lot together. We bring teams with us for security. We both do. And it's, it's, you know, but it's great. We'll do whatever we can for the Lord. And uh, we're both in Oklahoma. He leaves tomorrow. or uh, Orlando. Early. Okay, we're, we're in Orlando. We're in Orlando tomorrow. <laughs> He's in Orlando tomorrow. We're in Orlando Thursday because I forgot I was supposed to be there tomorrow. <laughs> so I blew it on the air. But um, and then after that, we're in Israel and then uh, Indiana. And, the, you know, wow. it, it's, it's all over the map. Um, and... And Brandon, same, Pastor Brandon, same thing. 
but it's there's family dynamics. Please pray for my wife. Yeah, um, she needs to love to... me more and understand more. <laughs> um, no, seriously, there there are dynamics that are that are challenging. But here's the bottom line. I look at it, and, and I know all three of us see the same thing. We can see the finish line. The last yeah. thing you should do when you see the finish line is just pull up the easy chair, and. Even people who believe in Bible prophecy think, I'm just going to put on a white robe and just hang out, sit on the beach and do nothing. No. Now we should be pressing harder than we ever have. It's like you use your resources. We understand we're going to heaven. We have, and once, and, and we still have light, right? We work while we still have daylight. That's right. Because soon it will be darkness. So yes. that's, that's what we do. And, and, we will do everything that we physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually possibly can until, until Jesus calls us home. So prayers along those lines, it's for all those things. Yeah. Physical, it's, it gets exhausting, and, and there's just stuff involved. But it's all right, right? Yeah. Right? 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 We're gonna, you guys are going to press as hard as you can, right? That's right. Well, that wasn't very. Impressive. <laughs> They're tired. No, I'm sorry. I talked. I talked enough. I went like ten minutes. Why don't we do this? Let's close and let's ask uh, oh. Pastor Brandon. Why don't you close this out? Why don't you, you know, yeah. maybe share uh, those who are watching online. Those, if you guys, could you please stand as we just kind of close out tonight, and uh, maybe talk about why we do what you, we yeah. do, why you do what you do, and all. Sure. So I think all of us we need to understand. Two things. If we're not saved, today is the day of salvation. Okay, you don't you don't you don't want to miss this. Christ has given uh, obviously eternal life to anyone who will believe. If you haven't made that decision, uh, make it tonight. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Most of the audience is are believers. Okay, and and so we're all on the same page. We understand that time is short. So there's two motivations that the scriptures will give us: a positive and a negative. Let me start with a positive first of why we fight all the way to the end, why we don't throw up the towel and surrender, why we do what we're called to do until the day of the rapture. The positive is rewards. Paul says there's a crown laid up for me, a crown of righteousness for those who love his appearing. That's those who love eschatology, those who will love his appearing, obviously the rapture. And, and so there's reward for doing what we do to... to to tell people the good news of Christ and to warn them. And there's the negative. So we're here to tell the good news, but to warn as well. And, and we're the watchers on the wall. And if you and I are not going to be the watcher, who is? And what does he say to the watcher? What does Ezekiel say to the watcher? What does God say? I'm going to hold you accountable if you don't warn them. But if you do warn them, then their blood will be on their heads and not on yours. And the apostle Paul even mentioned that. He goes, I have done my job. He goes, I've, I've basically taught the whole counsel of God. I am innocent of anyone's blood. He says that in what, Acts chapter 20? Remember that? Why does he say that? Because he had the watcher on the wall mentality as well. And so it's both, both a positive and a negative. We fight to the very end. Why? For rewards and also because it's our duty as a watcher on the wall. And we're responsible Amen. for that. So let's take that, that, that task seriously with joy and do our Father's work to the very end. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's thank uh, Amen. both pastors here tonight. Let's thank them. Wow, we have to do this. This went way too fast. Well, we're going to just have to do it again and pick up where yeah. we left off awesome. here. Awesome. would be great. We'd love to have you guys back. So we'll, we'll schedule that, get you guys back here. We'd love to have you back. 